that there'd be a storm hitting us this weekend, but its circularness, or cyclonic nature, took us rather by surprise. Not that we didn't prepare for it. As demonstrated in previous videos, I've been fixing up leaky pilot house windows for months. I went to get a line check, I put uh, one more line out on a boat, two, two extra pylons on the dock, and uh, we tied our neighbor's boat to our boat, because she's tied on to one pylon, while we are tied on to seven. So just in case the one goes off, at least she's, she doesn't fly away. <laughs> We're just in the boat, waiting for Tropical Storm Gamma to, to pass by. But we don't have any of those replacement vents above the galley in the head yet, and those are the biggest leaks remaining. The main concern are actually boats surrounding ours in the canal. Robbie checks the lines on our neighbor's boat and drains water from the nearby panga, not only as a good Samaritan, but because if everyone around us is in good order, we also have a better chance of remaining safe. Oh no, Choco. No, come, come, come. Get on the floor. Hey. Well, my concern is just that these uh, pilings, semi, what, what do you want to call them, cleats, pilings that make up the dock here are uh, not going to necessarily hold us. There's already a couple that are broken and that doesn't give me too much confidence. And that's the main concern right And now. a dear husband says that they are fine and the pilings are going to hold. And uh, I think, yeah, we are tied to six right now of them which are interlinked with rope as well. Uh, I don't think the piling or the ropes are gonna go. Woo! Wow. The only major concern is that we float onto the onto the dock. Yeah, the surge is coming up the quite high. The surge is coming up It's quite. higher than it was last we time. We've already put a tire on one of the piling that will keep us pushed away, just in case. And worst case scenario, we'll have to go dump an anchor on the other side just to keep us off the dock. And right now it's southeasterly, and it's going to turn more and more southerly throughout the day. Yeah, there you go, someone, someone is putting out a third anchor, trying to keep that boat. They have the opposite problem as us. They're on the dock, they, they, they're, being, they're pushed. being pushed. on the dock. So they put one anchor in the middle, one anchor in the front, and one anchor at the back. They got three anchors out now. It's usually, no matter what, Meteor could hit the planet and my wife was like, I'm gonna open a bottle of kombucha. Anyways. I have to open this bottle of kombucha. I have to check the gas level. Yeah, the last thing we need is an exploding bottle. Oof, there's no gas. There's no gas. They're not uh, fermenting very quickly because the weather is yeah. very cool. Yeah, cool, cool weather and new low sugar recipe. We had been locked inside the cabin for a large portion of the night and day when things started to calm down a little bit. Finally a chance to walk the dog and stretch our legs. It seemed like everything that had a chance of breaking or flying away around here had done so in the past 24 hours. Sometimes you have to wonder about construction materials for houses. Is this styrofoam? Yeah, it's styrofoam and cement. So they're pretty heavy. Why would you mix these? And we are thankful to be on our sturdy fiberglass boat. Pieces of construction sites were scattered around the neighborhood, streets flooded and trees fallen down. The beach was looking rather rough too, but I knew that there would actually be kite borders out there soon. The usual messy aftermath of a tropical storm at the dock with lines spiderwebbed every which way all around. We had a day and a half to dry things out before another cyclone decided to start forming, this time a little further north. Another circular type storm heading our way. There's a hurricane barreling down on us and we're, we're just yes. gonna take a quick sail. Decided to go for a fishing trip? Just for a quick, yeah, a little for bit sure. of a spin for some fish. We were on another person's boat, doing a favor and delivering this Island Packet 27 out of the potential hurricane path. The only problem was time. We were against the wind and against two knots of current. This was going to be a long 30 nautical mile trip. Yeah. We want the wind direction to change just a little bit to be more on our, our back 
coming up our butt because we can hardly keep the sail uh, full at this angle. But we also don't want to just go onto the reef or the rocks or the beach. So, But trying to pick up speed. It's all about speed. We'd done this trip without a properly functioning engine before on our own sailing vessel in Esperado. It took 24 hours from this particular point to the planned destination without an engine, speeds averaging one knot. This time, we only potentially had half that time before the hurricane was set to arrive. So we could tack back and forth, beat into the wind all we liked, but that would mean being out here while the wind and wave would start to build up. We crept along, as if we had no care in the world, while many power boats rushed past us heading south to avoid the front that would be arriving up north. We stuck as close to the shore as safely possible. I watched the sky carefully, as if at any moment, we would be able to see the spiral overhead. Of course, Robbie's mind was on catching us some dinner. It's called fishing only when you're catching. It's not sticking the gear out for a swim. <laughs> All the while, Hurricane Delta's wind speed was growing, and potential path moving further south towards us. But we had some luck. And I think there's a fish on the other line. Two bonitos just before arriving in the harbor. And we arrived just in time, with the beginnings of Hurricane Delta looming in the background. After a lot of fretting, I decided to stay with Celine at our friend's house, and Robbie would be alone on the boat to act quickly if there would be any problems. You all set? Yep, all set. Lying down. Lying down naked in my, in my <laughs> sexy towel. I'm gonna sleep to it like a baby. We've got 6 a.m. wake up call from the wind, probably. That's when it's expected to come. I'm putting my money on nine. It's not an early morning storm. The storm will decide. The storm will provide, not decide. Still. And it will provide. Mwah. The Yucatan Peninsula was potentially looking at a category four or five when I left the boat that night. But when the wind and the rain arrived in the morning with an eerie purple hue in the sky, the storm kind of fell flat. The boat hardly rocked, the water didn't dramatically rise, and nothing flew through the air as we feared. Robbie checked the lines for chafe regularly, but there was none to be had. He took a ride to the marina to check on all the fishermen, and all was well on that side of the harbor. Although the entrance, which is not protected from the sea at all, was looking pretty rough that day. The most danger was taking Choco out for a pee and making sure not to get hit by a coconut on the head. At the local grocery store, getting as much food as we could carry as usual. There is a lot of great fresh produce that keeps well, at least for about a week. Although we always have the canned options too. We stocked up on beans, rice, and flour for pancakes and breading. Are you getting the integral? I think one integral and two normal ones. Just not to have totally white flour. I want to make a recipe that doesn't involve using gas and doesn't involve using electricity. I mean, we have gas and electricity in our kitchen at this moment. We even have water. Just the big feeling around here when there's a storm or a hurricane is that we lock down the boat and try to keep as much water out of here as possible. And that means closing all the windows, there's not much air circulating, even though we try to have the fan going, if the electricity goes off, which it does often, turning on the stove in this galley is like turning on the sauna heater. So it's just a matter of trying to simplify the foods that we're making, and in a lot of cases trying not to have the stove going. Robbie and I have tried to get together three recipes, no gas, no electricity, just handmade food that won't involve a lot of hassle. So let's get to it. 
to the no cook cooking. The first recipe idea is a taboule type salad, but using couscous, because bulgur wheat is less common here. Taboule involves all these same veggies as well. Tomatoes, cucumbers, we have olive oil here, salt, pepper, onion, parsley, celery, and mint. The water is really hard here, it has a lot of uh, calcium and minerals in it. You can clean your dishes as much as you like, but they'll always look dirty. Good enough, clean enough, maybe. I could chop this all by hand, but I'm kind of lazy. And I have this hand food processor. Not using any electricity, technically. Bulgur wheat is a little more healthy than couscous. Couscous is a little more processed version of wheat, but that's okay. We don't want to be too healthy. As Robbie says, I've got my slightly overripe tomatoes here. I'm gonna start chopping those. I'm gonna slice up half of my tomatoes and half of my cucumber to make the dressing or the soup base to soak the couscous. The seeds are quite small with this. I'm not going to deseed it. It doesn't fit in this lime juicer. I'm going to juice the lime and cut the celery stalk, making sure to peel out as many strings as possible. A little salt, a little pepper, and then I let her rip. Get to the chopper! That's not bad. That's pretty juicy. I have the beginnings of a gazpacho raw veggie soup here. I've got enough liquid to mix in the couscous and start soaking it. No hot water or cooking needed. Beautiful. Now I chop up the remaining vegetables by hand so that it starts to look like a real medley. So we're getting there. It's a little limey and not salty enough. Bit of salt. The salt also helps to pull the juice out of the vegetables. But my favorite part is adding the greens, mint and parsley. I'm gonna get a really fine chop if I put the greens into the manual food processor, but I don't know, I don't know how fine I wanna go. This is a very fine line. I don't know if I wanna go really fine or a little bit less fine. Hmm. A couple leaves didn't get chopped. That's the problem with this chopper. That's a nay-nay on the food processor. I chop up the remaining green onion by hand because it looks nicer than chopping it in the food processor. The couscous has really fluffed up, basically to the same point as if it was cooked in boiling water. So now that it's sucked up enough liquid, I can add the oil. I f love olive oil. Couple of raisins. All right, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I've got some eggs on board and a little bit of extra protein can't hurt. I'm gonna boil up some two eggs. You'll need to gently place the egg in the water that has come to a boil with a spoon. Not drop it in like this or it'll crack open like mine. And you'll have to cook the egg for more than five minutes if you don't like it runny, like I do. Ooh. The only thing that could make it better would be some nuts. I'm, I'm nuts about nuts but I don't have any nuts today. For the next meal, between storms, Robbie always finds the time to catch some fish, even if it's the tiny kind that you find around our boat. We have many of the same fresh veggies around, which means that it's a perfect time for a ceviche. The fishing hasn't been spectacular around this time of hurricanes and storms, surprisingly, but it really doesn't take much to make a delicious meal. The fillets are small and delicate, about a tuna can's worth of fresh bar jack. Robbie anticipates using two limes, but will only use one as you'll see. He dices the fillets down to a small size, although some chefs will make the chunks much larger. It's all according to your personal taste. Smaller pieces cook faster in the lime juice. We have an orange left over from my kombucha drink making, and that adds a nice alternative citrus sweetness to the fish instead of only lime. While the fish is cooking in the citrus mix, we can get together the rest of the vegetables. Tomatoes cut once again and cucumber. So Ravi does this thing with the cucumber. What's this thing? 
It removes the bitterness from the cucumber, supposedly, allegedly. Robbie also removes the seeds from this cucumber. Look at all these possible techniques. Cilantro is key to the ceviche flavor, but we understand that not everyone is so into cilantro. Habanero chili is also a good addition. I should put a pair of gloves on to touch it. Olive oil, salt, and pepper. Most people don't like it, but I like celery inside my ceviche. There's a celery there if you want. Also this time, taking the time to remove the strings makes all the difference. I like to strain my liquid at least a little bit, if it gets too limey. The fish will slowly turn white as it cooks. After about 15 minutes, this one, sliced into small chunks, was ready and cooked. Most people don't put avocado in ceviche. You don't put avocado, but some people do. What you can do is you can put the avocado on top of your toast or your like uh, tostados, yeah. and then you put the avocado, the ceviche. You, you kind of use like butter, then you incorporate. It's a fish salad instead of a ceviche. There's so little fish this time. <laughs> it's like eighty percent of it should be fish normally. Who said that? That's what ceviche is. It's mostly fish. But like, I like mine more vegetable, personally. We have some nice tostadas handy, and we serve it just like that. So you have, it's more manageable, or even three pieces. I break it into four. Yeah, into four. Oh. Tostadas are baked corn tortillas. Fried tortilla chips, or totopos, are nice, as well as fresh tortillas. Mm. Spicy? Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. <laughs> Lastly, this really isn't a meal, but rather a sauce, spread, or dip that can be used in a variety of sandwiches or as a side on your favorite charcuterie platter. I'm talking about fancy mayonnaise. Usually, when you make alioli, it's done the best. We do it is in a ceramic uh, pestle and mortar, and you uh, pound your garlic into a fine paste uh, before you add your egg yolk. My hands and the chopping board are going to smell like garlic for the rest of the time. Yeah. <laughs> mm. We wasted the egg white here, but there are many recipes, especially dessert recipes, that could use that leftover part of the egg, of course. A little more salt and then simply mix, 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 adding slowly, slowly olive oil as you go on. After only a few minutes of mixing, you should be able to tip the bowl without the spread dripping out, like mayo. Test. It stays there. It doesn't move at all. You can put some curry powder, nice and colorful. So many ways to... You can put some uh, pureed cilantro that makes it green. Enjoy with your tacos or on your favorite sandwich, whether you find yourself in the eye of a storm or not. Thank you to all our patrons who support this channel, especially who keep these videos going. Thank you from Choco and Robbie and I.